So we didn't have the faith-based tech connection chat last month, and I was excited to meet with you today to find out what's been going on, what's been happening in your community. Mark, I know you work at the Boys Ranch. We definitely want to know what you're doing, how are you doing your fundraising this year, your strategic planning, whatever you want to share. I, I want to hear about it because we always pick up little nuggets from each other. So Mark, look, I'll just let you start. What's been happening, Mark? Oh, that is crazy. Um, so uh, I'm the IT director for the Good Samaritan Boys Ranch. Uh, we actually, in the last two years, have expanded a lot. Um, and to, for me, I'm more on the end of uh, trying to get everybody the tools that they need. Uh, so we have a boys ranch. So we, we house about 80 boys. And then we also have group homes for youth that are aging out of foster care. Um, and then also we, we actually have a school-based program. So we have therapists that go into schools. Um, and then on top of that, we, we actually have in-home care, uh, in, in home. So we actually have a, a stabilization program that works with foster kids that, uh, trying to get the, to stabilize new families that have foster kids and some with, um, before kids ever have to get into foster care, working with those kind of families. So for us, uh, for me, when it comes to technology, I kind of glean as much as I can. There's a lot been happening lately, um, especially in the fundraising realm. Um, I'm kind of on the side note. For a long time, I was at the forefront when it came to using things like eTapestry and BlackBot. Um, uh, my new thing, uh, which is kind of uh, trying to, oh man, I, our, our big thing is trying to activate the good in, wherever we can find it sometimes. Um, and so in its weird realm, we've been uh, looking more into cryptocurrencies, which is kind of a interesting little, maybe nothing, but that's, that's kind of where, where my guide has been. Um, it's kind of all over and maybe uh, technology is probably good for people with ADHD, which I don't have it, at least I've never been diagnosed, but um, there's just a lot going on. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. I don't think you're wrong with cryptocurrency, despite what we hear, you know, the markets crash and everything. And I don't know if you guys are using every.org where um, you can accept cryptocurrency yet as donations, because you just never know, you know, what millennial is saying, hey, I made all this money in cryptocurrency. I want to do some tax write off. So I don't think you're wrong with that. Um, <laughs> and you guys are doing a lot. One thing you said at the beginning that you're trying to get everyone, you know, up to speed. So, uh, you got for what you're doing, I know you have a lot of moving parts. So there was a guy that said something that made me curious. He said he was an IT person, but whenever he gets new volunteers, whenever he gets new person on board, you know, he always has to train. And, um, you know, my manager, Nick was like, great suggestion. Just let them take a, um, a course at TechSoup. We have all these different courses. Yes. So what are you doing to help your people move forward? Well, my big thing is I when I first started, I'd been doing this for about two years. Um, prior to this, I, I was a missionary. Um, my wife and I worked in Chicago with um, South Asians, which is a large tech community in Chicago. Um, so gleaned a lot of different things. When it comes to learning the premise for me originally was to sit down with somebody and, and teach them but i uh, we try to do as much as possible to get so basically i help the supervisors and then um when it comes to orientation we've been working on creating a mentoring program so we use office 365 which we got through TechSoup, um and their training microsoft allows some awesome training resources um, when you set it up for your organization, it gives you some great tools um, uh, to be able to just almost be hands off on some of that. And it allows them to do kind of le learning, on, learning on their own. And then you're just there to answer questions. And I think that's probably the best part is when you can guide people through learning on their own. Yeah. Um, so it makes it a little harder. The teaching part, um, if you can give them uh, the resources they need and Sometimes just the resources is just a quick email and a way to get a template. Um, sometimes it's just making sure, which I really love with TechSoup, um, the options. So most of our 
um, subscription base we've gotten from so QuickBooks, those kind of things. You guys have given us everything we need to, to be able to go forward with those. Um, and it makes it easier for those that aren't technology minded. So, Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And I want to know, I'm curious to hear from everybody else because uh, you said some key things because Microsoft does have those classes because I have Office 365 and having those little classes, even they're short and they're bite-sized classes so people can learn. How many of you are using your technology tools as a way to train people where you don't have to do the work like you you can't work 24 hours how many how, who else is using those tools to train their people or allow them to get training anybody else okay mark you might be that you might be the teacher here so you just laid out some nuggets go ahead actually can i share something about that yeah um if you if you're set up with the Office 365, the Microsoft has a site called Learn, and you can set that up as your own stuff. Um, so like I have a personal live email account, Outlook, Outlook, Hotmail, whichever you want to call it. And it allows me to go in and take classes um, through Microsoft, and they're pretty quick based. So like a five minute lesson, 10 minute lesson. Um, and then it gives me the tools that I need to be able to walk through my employees in how to do things. And that is totally free. It's like using GitHub or um, any kind of uh, um, open source uh, training. Uh, and they actually will give you all the training you need to be able to take courses to get certified. So if you're working with your employees to be able to get them to the next level that they wanna do something more, for me it's IT, but it might be office management or just using Office 365. They'll give you everything to get certified in the software um, and then use an, uh, either IT or HR or whatever you're doing. You can actually use that um, and then get them involved. Uh, they use the badge system, which is kind of you know fun for people to get a badge. So, Wow, thank you. That, that's, that's good information, Mark, seriously. So who else wants to share? Let's let's have this conversation. What are you doing for the summer? How are you keeping your community engaged? Um, what are you doing for fundraising? Anybody else want to share? You can use the raise your hand option or you can just wave at me. Well, I don't see anybody. So I was picking up on something that Mark said a few minutes ago about um, helping foster kids. And that's a... Um, that's the population that that is our next generation the, the the people that he's taking care of so i i would love to hear from kevin um i don't know what generation they call you generation z whatever you guys they always come up with me but can you give them you know some thoughts about how they can you know help your not their nonprofits or or what are your what do you think about the nonprofit world i would love to hear that kevin yeah, definitely. It's definitely Generation Z or Y. I'm very confused as to the naming, but that's besides the point. Um, so just off the top of my head, if you're trying to like reach out to younger generations and for a little bit of context, I'm 21. So that's that's my input. That's where I can give my thoughts. Um, big things that I see more and more charities doing, which I think is really important that really separates this generation is social medias. And the most recent one is TikTok. I've seen brands just skyrocket just due to solely having a great TikTok presence, being able to recognize and follow trends. And then you may not have the time to follow those trends and just be on TikTok all the time because that's kind of like a little bit of a time waste if you're just sitting there, we can doing other works but I'm sure you have children or grandchildren who are on those sites and you can just ask them like, hey, I need some help with TikTok or Instagram. And they'd, they'd probably be willing to, to lend some advice. TikTok, Susan said so TikTok, my apologies. Um, and then another thing, us kids, we have a very short attention span. So you need like a snazzy graphic and title when you're posting stuff, because I'm going to be honest, for work, if you send me a long email, I'm probably not going to read that. I'm going to read the title, first few sentences, and if it looks important, I'll skim it, but I won't really read it. So 
little fault of mine, but I've noticed that's a trend with younger people. We don't really, if it doesn't immediately pertain to us, it's in one ear, out the other. So you really got to grab us. And then I think the most important nugget of information I have is just utilizing local schools. So on top of this job at TechSoup, I do an, some more work with another charity known as RSF. And the way they recruited me was the owner or CEO of RSF was an alumni at my college. He was looking for marketing help. So he reached out to the Dean of the business school and was like, hey, I need help with, um, with this marketing project. And I know your school requires all the business students to get internships. So I'd like to recruit some of your students for an internship. And from there, he was able to give a pitch to the marketing students and he ended up recruiting three of us and we were able to help expedite the process. So going to your son's daughters or grandchildren's schools or even your own past schools and asking, hey, can I give this pitch to help you know, the students as an alumni, I'm looking to help give back to the community. Part of the community is these schools and give them the, give them some expertise, some advice that'll help them in their careers. And then I'm not sure, I haven't talked to my boss, Aretha here, but probably some of the reasons I stuck out as a candidate was because of that project I did with RSF, which was a non, which was a charity. You can this, also translates to high school students. They are looking to do some volunteer work because that is really important for college applications. So that's my, my thoughts. Feel free to pick my brain on anything I said or any other questions you have. That was awesome. Kevin dropped some nuggets there. And there was a comment in here from um, Susan. She said, do you want to engage at all times also so do you want the engagement at all times also susan would you unmute yourself and and ask that question because i'm not sure if i'm even saying it right the way you wanted to ask i don't know if you're able to unmute yourself because several people said they were at work so if you want to um, rewrite the question um, please do that anybody else have any questions or comments thoughts about what kevin said please use the, raise Just your hand use off his the comments um, I'll answer it how I think you're asking it, and then you can let me know if I did it correctly in the chat. So she asked, do you want the engagement all the time also? I'd say just a consistent like upload, like don't spam bombard me, but enough where like, if it's like a daily thing where I see it every now and then, where it's repeatability, I become familiar with your brand. You're starting to like come up in my head. An example I'll give is, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, is there's a game called Raid Shadow Legends and I get ads for it all the time. And while I might somewhat like a uh, meme about it, like, oh, uh, it's, it's this game, it's always there. But whenever someone asks me about a game, that's the first thing in my head. So if you're able to get in my head, maybe make fun of yourself a little bit, but not too much, because you gotta be serious a bit, but show your, authenticity, like, hey, we're doing this great thing, but we like to have fun. That really resonates with us younger people. Hmm. And Kevin, you mentioned about graphics. I would love to know what everybody is using to make your graphics. Do you hire somebody? Do you use Canva? What are you using? Go ahead and type in the chat room and you can feel free to unmute yourself. I will tell you that there is a wonderful website called Poster My Wall. Does anybody use that one? Michelle, you do? Isn't that awesome? I mean, you can have all kinds of ideas. It's already done for you, and I'm gonna show it to you. So everybody's using Canva uh, and Adobe. Do you pay for Canva, or are you just using the free version? So Scott, you hire somebody that uses Canva. Go ahead, Michelle, unmute yourself. Hi, I was paying for Canva, but through TechSoup, I was able, because I'm a nonprofit and I have documentation, I was able to get it for free um, just because I'm a nonprofit. And that has been amazing because I can extend it out to my team. 
Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. I'm going to show you poster my wall. First, I'm going to put the link in here because I think that you all should definitely use this. It, it is not free. Um, it is $39 a month, but if you use a lot of graphics, this is something that it's already done for you. I'm waiting for it to come up. One second. Templates. Okay. And I'm going to share my screen in just a moment. Um, and the reason why is because, you know, with Kevin saying making snazzy graphics, something to grab my attention. I know Canva is wonderful. I use Canva. I have a Canva account, but sometimes, you know, when you see other people's graphics, you're like, oh, wow, that is awesome. So, um, you know, you want something bigger and better. So let me know when you can see my screen. This is not the one I want to share. One second. One second. This is the one. Anybody have any questions in the meantime while I'm waiting for this to come up? Okay, can you see my screen? Give me a nod or a thumbs up. Okay, so this is poster my wall. And and they've already got like you got images in here. If you click on it, you can just replace the picture with your picture. Um, you got album cups, you got posters, you got flyers, social media graphics. You have um, Facebook cover photos, thumbnails, um, anything. If you put a keyword in here, like somebody give me a keyword. Give, give me a, whatever you want. If you say, um, I, I would type in a chat room. Um, it's awesome. Uh, give me a keyword. Somebody give me a keyword because I can't think of it. Okay, food insecurity. Oh my God, I don't know that. She's she's looking, think about grant writing now, but I get it. <laughs> so <laughs> let me put it food insecurity. Hey, you never know. You just click click on that i typed it in let's see what they come up with and anything oops some i clicked it too fast insecurity there you go search so anything that has food in it so you may not use all of these but my point is you grab ideas if you're having a barbecue you grab these you change your name if you click on it you'll see how you can change the words the links um, you see all these, so anything you can think of, it comes up and it just goes on and on and on. So if I were to say, you know, Merry Christmas, this is, this seems like a good one. If I were to open that, I hit edit design. Um, I can just go in and change my name, um, change the address here. I can say, um, on, on zoom. It's, it's done. I can delete all that. I can change the phone number, change this to say our church name or grandma's menu or whatever, you know, whatever. You can change all that. You can even change the, you can replace this with another picture of your food. This is amazing. I'm telling you, when somebody told me about this, I was like, I got to do this. So I use it. Um, well, I, I signed up for the subscription and though I did, I may not use it every month, when I do, I'm happy because I didn't have to pay anybody whatever, $50, whatever the going rate is to create a graphic. So you may want to look into that. Um, can TechSoup be a vendor? I will reach out to um, to um, Gail. Gail is a person that kind of onboards like new technology. Thank you for saying that, Sharon. I'll reach out to her. Um, it's about relationship building. We have to know, you know, what they'll be, what they're willing to give you all, because not everybody, you know. But a lot of companies say, yeah, we'll, we'll you know, we'll reach out to the nonprofits this way. So I'll reach out to Gail and ask her if she can reach out to them. So thank you for mentioning that. But yeah, post to my wall is amazing. Anybody else have any comments or um, say you can also pay only when you want to download or download with the watermark free? Yes, yeah. Uh, maybe that's why I I don't have the watermark because I pay. You can also put videos on these too. I don't know if you saw. You see some big names out there in ministry. Um, you see people who've made their graphics. Their graphics are on post on my wall. And all you have to do is replace it with your images. It, it, I'm telling you, it's incredible. Michelle, she's nodding her head because, yeah, she knows. So anybody else have any um, questions about uh, what Kevin said or questions for Kevin? That was some good information. Okay, so who else wants to share? This is this is this is summer kickoff chat, y'all. We're just chatting. Some people are at lunch. That's why they're on mute. They can't talk. But 
What else are you doing to empower your organization? Joseph, did you want to say something? I think they accidentally muted itself. I see you, Mer, Mer, Mer I don't know. Mira. Yes. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good to be here. Thank you for hosting this. I had a question. Uh, what uh, programs are available? What do people use to organize their photographs? Oh, anybody here? Uh, mm. Michelle, she got her hand raised. Did you want to answer that question or was that uh, a different question? Different question. Okay. Um, so what are you doing to organize your phot photographs? Now, uh, uh, are they in your phone or you mean on your computer or what? Yes, there. You know, the organization has a whole bunch of photographs. You know how we do things, Aretha, because we're all nonprofits. We have tons of pictures from generations, from years and years, and we trot them out whenever we have to put out an appeal or put together a slide presentation, or there's a gala, or there's some event going on, and you want to highlight past events of the same kind or whatever it is, or there is a, uh, a handout, a brochure, whatever it is that you're doing, you want to have some photographs, but ours are haphazard, they're just thrown in a folder, they're somewhere sitting on some computer, somewhere on the hard drive, whatever, wherever it is, on the, on the, on the web, on the cloud. I just wondered if people had any experience of using a program where you can maybe organize it so that retrieval is a little bit easier. Otherwise, you're you know, wading through all these photographs and taking some out and so on. I just wondered what everybody else did. That is a great question. Um, a lot of people put comments in the chat room, Google Photos, um, uh, Dropbox. I, did, I just update, upgrade my Dropbox because I have high res resolution photos and videos. Um, Kevin Mall, he says Adobe Creative Cloud and OneDrive. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Joy says she uses OneDrive and she organizes by folder and um, portable hard drives, meta folders, and dated. Awesome. And Brian put a link in here. What is that, Brian? You want to tell us about that? And I see your hand, Ashley. You want you want to tell us about that, Brian? Hi. Yeah. Um, so my Leo is uh, it's. I, from what you're saying, I think it, it's it's a uh, it's a lot allows you to like store your photos. It's or, it's a photo organization pretty much. You can use like what service you want. Like I, I saw a lot of people saying Dropbox, Google Drive. You can pick whatever you want, but it's just a program where it, they have a phone app and and the uh, a desktop app where you can kind of organize it how you want. Um, it, it just plays well with all these different services. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And I see, Norma, this is great. I created a folder, then a subfolder with the titles that reflect the folders. Yeah. So most of the photos are reused based on the need. So you categorize them accordingly. That was a good one. Yeah. yeah. And thank you for asking that for a great question. So Michelle, I'm going to um, um, ask you to unmute and then Ashley. So one of the things I wanted to go back to is about posting. Canva allows you to schedule your post. So you can schedule that it posts every day at 10 o'clock or you know whatever the case may be which is very helpful as a nonprofit as a one person nonprofit it allows me to do the the graphics and such and then schedule them to be posted and I'm not sure if it posts to TikTok but it definitely does to Instagram and Facebook very good I didn't know that because I haven't been on Canva in a while so thank you for sharing that now can I import what I made from post on my wall into Canva and then still have it posted or I have to use a Canva um, picture I have imported from Adobe because they have some things that I like better than Canva and yeah it all kind of works together it's like chicken soup everything in it I love it I love it now that is a good tip thank you so much Ashley, you had your hand raised, but you left. Okay, there you go. Hi. Hey, I'm still here. Yeah, I was just going to respond about the photo organization. What works well for us is to have everything in a dated folder. So I start out with 2022, and then I have 01 January. And then in January, I have all of the events that we do in January that we've taken pictures of. Because we're a church, and so, you know, Easter happens every year. And 
next Easter, we're going to want to use pictures from last Easter to tell people to come and join us for this Easter. So having it organized in that way is just really clear for everybody in the organization where to go to look for things. The other thing that I like about Dropbox is that you can search. And so being really intentional about folder names and file names is really helpful with that because then you can go in and search for Easter or search for um, Halloween or whatever the event may be to find the corresponding photos for those. Um, then within that, I'll also go back in and I choose my best of because we do um, an annual report in January, we do a stewardship campaign in the fall. And so we're always going to want those really like top notch, very favorite pictures to use in those print pieces. And so I go back in and I have a best of folder that that's the first place that we look when we're looking for that great picture that's going to be, you know, the front page of the annual report this year. So that just kind of helps streamline everything and also have everything all in one place because there may be a picture that somebody else thinks is perfect that I didn't like, but yeah, we all have our opinions. <laughs> yeah, I love that best of folder. I'm going to start using that. Thanks for that tip. That 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 was a good one. So um, I saw a comment in here from Ben. I think was it? Did it go away? Somebody, you can you can schedule posts through Meta on Facebook and Instagram. So um, are you using the Meta nonprofit, Ben? I mean Sharon, Sharon. You are tell tell us about it because they they're gonna come they're gonna do a webinar with it. they're gonna do one in July but we moved it back until September I believe so make sure you pay attention to this because uh, they're gonna come on and tell us how they can we can use uh, Meta go ahead yeah we um I have a person luckily who does a lot of my social media stuff but um, we've been you used to be able with Facebook, just post through Facebook. And then all of a sudden they changed us to a business page. So that kind of changed everything. All of a sudden we were in meta, all of a sudden you can do all these things. You can post everywhere all at once. And what's nice about it is if you have multiple people, you can go in and see what other people have scheduled to be posted. So you're not over posting each other, which I think is really annoying. Um, so, it's not too, it, there's a bit of a learning curve I found, but I'm old, so that, that could be why. Um, but it, it seems pretty efficient and, and I like that it posts at both places. And I think you can post elsewhere um, in addition to those two. Oh, good, good to know, good to know. Speaking of Facebook and Meta, I wish I had a poll here because I'm wondering who has migrated from Facebook to another social media or who's still using Facebook because Everybody I know is still using Facebook and still mm -hmm. find Facebook to be the place where our age group will show up. Anybody else comments on that? Michelle's shaking her head. No, let me hear it, Michelle. Let me hear mm -hmm. it. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm a senior too, but I kind of reverted to Instagram because I find that the, um, the generation that I'm going after, Instagram and TikTok are where they're at. And anybody over 55, you're not old. Just saying. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Evan, I want to hear your thoughts because you you mentioned TikTok. That's all you mentioned today. So why why TikTok? Why TikTok? Um, with COVID, it just came out like a perfect time. I just see a lot more people on it, a lot more like there's a feature called duet, so a little more interactions compared to Instagram where it's just like reposts they both serve their different functions so if you're making more videos that's your TikTok if it's more of a simple simple post I'd say Instagram um I'm not sure as to which one would be best for which organizations that depends on what you're looking to do like if you're doing for how to's I'd probably guess TikTok but also keep in mind that your TikToks can also be posted on your Instagram. So you can grow both at the same time. Okay, so now I need a TikTok account. So I'm hearing in the comments, they want TikTok training, Kevin. So I guess you got to bring it. <laughs> now there's a social media intern for that. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's like, I love it. Okay, um, is TikTok for church services or Instagram? Ooh. Michelle, you use it both. She says both. Who else is using? Okay, Miss Bree says both. Um, I I have been seeing like I'm I'm like 
a fanatic about Instagram now. I don't, I rarely go to Facebook. Um, I hope Facebook don't hear this, but I, I um, it's just me personally. I'm not talking, I'm not representing TechSoup, but I love seeing videos on Meta, I mean, on Instagram because Facebook stopped letting you use other people's music, you know? And so that's why I like Instagram, but now you're saying TikTok matches with Instagram. It posts it both places. So I got my, go ahead, Mark. Yes, I want to hear it. <laughs> I hate to blow everybody's mind. Facebook and Instagram are one thing. They're they're not they two. They are. They are one thing, but they they're 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 working differently. I can't post my video with music on Facebook. It it, it shuts it down. So it's, I think both of them in TikTok. I okay. I'll tell this one silly funny story. So when I I had a TikTok for about thirty minutes. Until somebody in my remote family said, I thought TikTok was bad. But my kids love Vines. If anybody remembers Vines, um, which all that's all TikTok is, but for a billion people um, compared to <laughs> Vines, sadly going away. Um, I, think, I think you're gonna find, anytime you get that video, aspect where you can explain things. I think, I really think Instagram is going to expand and you're going to have less time constraints and be able to do more uh, kind of what you can find on TikTok. Uh, one of my favorite um, tech guys who's like 65, 68 years old, he might even be older than that. If, if you ever had a chance to check out Leo Laporte on Tech TV, um, he's got some really funny things, but his son has this really great cooking TikTok channel. So you could do a huge amount of getting your message out through that. Now for our organization, our development director said no, and she's 23. So I, <laughs> I think when it comes to church use and those kind of things, it depends on where your church falls on that conservative mindset. So, I get Kevin, it. I got to admit to you, I do love Linguini the Snake, um, which is a very, very funny TikTok uh, star. So there you go. That, that's awesome. Somebody asked, can you stream your church service on TikTok? The whole service? Michelle, you're saying, yeah? I thought it was like limited. Anybody There's a live function that I don't know the time limit, but I mean, I've seen um, live that were 25, 30 minutes long. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. So Charles said TikTok is also risky cybersecurity wise. They collect a lot of data on your users. U.S. intelligence agencies have begun investigating where exactly that data is going. Honey, we're on Zoom. Uh, I think, um, sorry to tell you, I think everybody's collecting our data. We have everybody, there's cybersecurity everywhere. Uh, we just have to learn about it. You know, anytime we have a course, and I think we're going to have one coming up, we, we will um, in August. Make sure you attend that course to so just grab all the nuggets that you can. I don't think there's nothing we can do as individuals about cybersecurity except report it and be aware of it. Uh, Mark, go. I see you guys see you chomping at the bit. I want to hear it. Go ahead. I want to hear it. Oh, it, TikTok is always an it's, it's, So I also teach at Evangel University, uh, and most of my stuff is cybersecurity. So TikTok is one of those that everybody talks about is an issue. Uh, and it'll always, something will always come up. So I, uh, I think with the last, uh, oh, in the last few years, we've heard a lot about TikTok and those kind of things. I think it's going to probably be cybersecurity wild wise. I think some of us that that's one of the reasons why we're not on it. But uh, there's some that just aren't afraid. Um, I think it's the same thing goes with it's going to be Google or you're going to have Google or Bing or any other person or any other ISP going to be following us. So I guess you end up having to try to decide um, what your risk tolerances when it comes to that. And if you're afraid, you know, of what you're going to share, being faith-based, I'm really, I don't really worry about what I'm going to share because things that shouldn't be shared, I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Look. That's the hard part. No, good. That was good. That was good. And I, I get it, Charles. This is an IT guy. So it's, 
It's your job to be paranoid. I get it. I totally get it. I'm paranoid about some things. Sharon asked um, about doing a video e-blast. She says, has any, she's thinking about doing those to her recurring donors. Is anybody using a video? When you say e-blast, she means email, right, Sharon? Okay. Yeah, the, um, I use network for good and network for good gives you the option of being able to send out video e-blast. So I was thinking of sending them to the people that I'm not going to do an ask of, but send them something just kind of, you know, good news kind of thing um, and thanking them for being recurring donors. So I don't know if those are well received. I, I, I've never done them before. So has anybody done video emails? Ashley, go ahead. Yeah, we have had good luck with those in being very short emails um, or short videos, I mean, and the way that our email service provider works, we can't actually embed the video in the email. So it's it's a click out either to our website or to the video directly on Vimeo or YouTube, depending on where you've got your account. Um, but yeah, we have, we have a lot of click through success and um, then we have seen an uptick in giving when we send an email that says, hey, thanks so much for this. And you've done this great job. And don't forget, we're also doing this other thing. And we get a lot of response from folks who then click through to give um, on that as well. So that it has been really successful for us. I think the key on that is to be short on those videos. Um, people don't want to watch for more than 90 seconds, probably. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, Kim Wilson said a lot of mentions for videos. What are your best practices for making videos? Um, is it hiring a professional? If not, what are you using for content creation hacks? Anybody want to share? Um, not in terms of content, but getting videos made. We developed a relationship with our um, local community access channel, and they are always doing trainings and um, wanting to bring more people into the channel. So they will do videos for you with some of their trainees as a way to get them to learn the equipment and all of that kind of stuff. So it's a good way to get a professionally done video at no cost. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And Don, I see your hand. You could go ahead and unmute yourself. And don't forget about what Kevin said, reach out to the schools, you know, for interns. Hi, Donna. Um, if you're speaking, we can't hear you, but I see you unmuted. Maybe you're having trouble with your sound. Okay, we lost her. Um, anybody else had a comment on that? Okay, Donna's having trouble with her sound tech issues. Yeah, we, we can't um, avoid that. Uh, curious, uh, Kevin says, do you ha have you hosted PHP mail ser service that prevents video embedment? Ooh. Kevin, I think you might want to explain yeah, I was just curious what type of mail server. It's, I'm assuming it's a hosted uh, email provider and not something like Exchange or Gmail. Right. So we yeah. use we send our emails through TouchPoint, which is a, our church database management system. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we blast out all of our emails. And so we're not able to do the video embeds that way. Okay. Yeah, I figured that it was probably a PHP mail server because I've had a lot of questions about mail uh blasts on those and I have zero experience with them so good stuff see I love this summer chat this is so good um anybody else have any questions or comments Mark I see you unmuted yourself yeah go ahead Mark a good resource I don't know if anybody has ever used TechSmith um they they create a oh a screen capture software called Snagit that will actually It'll actually allow you to record your screen as if you're doing tutorials and stuff like that for teaching. Um, but it also allows you to, um, rather than creating a video, it'll do MP4, which is perfect for websites and that kind of thing. But it also lets you create uh, animated GIFs automatically. So it'll take your video and turn it into a, a GIF, which is just another, uh, another image. Uh, your email server uh, servers will actually just see it as an image. Um, Depend, depending on what they're using as a client. So if they're using Outlook or um, Thunderbird or whatever you want to call, whatever they're gathering their email in, uh, that's the only thing that will actually block the images. Uh, 
it, most people, most software is going to be created. So Outlook and those kind of things are created that when you get an email, it blocks the images because the brace, basic tenant uh, premise for images is if you can see the image, whoever sent you that email can also see you. So it's like a two-way window. So most software programs for your email will block any kind of images that come in. So as a, as a nonprofit that wants to send out an email blast, Sometimes if you can get rid of the video portion, put in uh, just a graphic as a GIF, uh, it'll get beyond the, the, the filtering software for those kind of things. And then they purposefully can unlock it. So. Okay, thanks, Sharon. Donna, let's see if you were able to um, unmute yourself. Go ahead. Sorry, I just didn't have permissions on. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, we just, uh, we've been doing training through Zoom online, just uh, live classes on Zoom. And we've just done our first uh, Podia class, which is, uh, uh, they let you do online trainings. And we created the videos for them like a PowerPoint presentation, but we did it in Canva. And Canva allows you to have like a little talking head at the bottom. So uh, the woman who's teaching, you see her face and then you see the slides. But when she's recording in Canva, they allow you to have a little script. And so as she's going through each one, we made the slides where there was just that amount of text per slide. And so uh, we were just able to record very easily. And then uh, we just uploaded these videos to Podia and then people take this whole class, which is a series of videos. And uh, we're getting feedback on it just now. So um, it seems to be going well, but. Good. That, thanks for sharing that. That's a new one that I hadn't heard of. Yeah. Well, this has been very fruitful. Um, where can I find a social intern? Somebody sent me that message. Um, anybody want to chime in and give us some suggestions on social intern? Yeah, Sharon, go ahead. Um, if you have an organization near you that will sponsor you to do Catch a Fire, C-A-T-C-H-A-F-I-R-E. Um, it's actually an organization that matches skilled volunteers with nonprofits. So um, what you do is you put your project in, let's say you wanna do a video for whatever, they put it out to all their volunteers and then they get back in touch with you and say, I can help you or I can do this. Um, we actually had them come and they can facilitate like a strategic planning meeting. They'll do stuff to help you with your uh, annual appeal or your annual report. Um, I get mine through a group here in Connecticut called the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. They kind of sponsored it. But if you go to catchafire.org, they have all the information and it's free. So um, you and you you do it initially by phone and then you set up an actual regular meeting. So it, we've gotten a lot of very skilled people to do stuff for us through that that organization. Awesome. Thank you. I'm trying to see who's unmuted so I can mute them. Norma, you're unmuted. Did you want to say something? Yes, in regard to the interns, our nonprofit has used interns successfully for 18 years developing uh, projects for us, uh, our logo, um, our social media is being managed by interns. And the downside is you have to retrain someone with every um, semester. But the good, the good side of it is that you can offer these interns really powerful experiences. So I have engaged in a number of professional trainings that I recorded for, for instance, uh, blog writing, uh, YouTube video development, et cetera. So I start my interns off with reviewing those training videos. So I'm not repeating everything. And they come with a skill set already. And I always ask them what their goals are for the internship period so that I'm giving them the proper ex exposure to what they want to add to their portfolio. Um, and then interns are invited to also volunteer to continue beyond that semester and maybe do blog writing uh, and things like this that they can still put in their portfolio as they seek um, employment. They have now got their names associated with an absolute uh, 
project. So, um, you know, I hope that helps. And my interns now the past three years have been all remote. Um, I do get a chance to take them to lunch or visit them, but I find with managing the communications end of things, I prefer remote okay. um, so that they can be creative and take their time blog writing and not have to worry about the office environment, so to speak. Um, and I'm cultivating them to um, also begin to do um, uh, contract work on sites such as Upwork. Mm -hmm. And I will be their very first employer on Upwork because we give a stipend for their internship. Really helping launch someone's career as well as hopefully establishing a relationship with your organization so they'll continue to spread um, your message, which in our case is drug prevention. Awesome. Thank, thank you for sharing. Amy, you were unmuted. Did you want to say something? And I, I'm trying to see, um, thank you for putting that in the chat. Um, someone is unmuted and I cannot find them because there's so many people on the screen. So please make sure your mic is muted for the quality of the recording. Thanks. Go ahead, Amy. No, I just want to thank, um, thank both uh, Norma and Kevin and Sharon for some great advice. Thank you. Yeah, I thank you too. And I'm sure everybody else too, even, even when people are silent. I'm sure there are, I see some people writing down and shaking their head, nodding their head. So thank you all for your input. We have a few more minutes. Any other last questions, comments, um, insights that you gained from today you want to share? Feel free. Five, four, three, two, <laughs> one. Well, then I'm going to give you back your time. Um, I want to thank Kevin Mohall for always coming in and joining us and adding um, some great advice in here. Um, the webinar producer intern, Kevin Wong, he's way in California. I'm in Florida. So this, this virtual is working out great. And I want to thank you all for being here today. As I always say, listen, you're taking care of so many people, but please make sure you take time to take care of yourself. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.